Hey guys, I hope you're ready because it's time to get salty! And if you stay, I promise to make no more salt related jokes. <clears throat> right then, so I recently finished uh, Dark Souls 3. Had a lot of fun, good stuff, good stuff, good times, and all that. And I felt like something was missing, like I needed another fix, like I needed more. But yeah, it's gonna be a while before Dark Souls 3 DLC comes out. But in the meantime, I finished it right on time when this game came out. Salt and Sanctuary. So I've been playing through it blind for most of it. Okay, the only thing I had spoiled was about the sigils and uh, I looked up a map where all the locations I could use them were because I am not going through the game a second time looking for the places that I passed by and totally forgot. So yeah, apart from that, totally blind. So I figured um, I found a very nice spot for farming uh, even though the game has been uh, pretty easy so far. I didn't feel the need to farm for anything or such. But uh, yeah, a good farm spot is a good farm spot, so I decided to share it, just in case. Maybe I should have looked up online if this is even a good spot or not. Like I said, I'm doing it blind. I found a good spot that's good for me, so maybe it's good for you. Who knows? Right. So here we go. We are in the red hole of cages, and this is where we fought the boss in order to make it on the side where I am. I think it was called the Tree of Man. Cool fight, cool, cool fight, cool fight. After you beat him, you're gonna end up on this side where I am, and we're gonna get to the spot where we're gonna farm. Right. So, in case I haven't mentioned already, this is Salt and Sanctuary. You know what the video is probably gonna be fucking cold up there, but whatever. So, we're gonna enter Hagger's Cavern. So, as soon as we enter it, the first thing we wanna go, uh, we wanna do is come up here. As you can see, I'm not used to tutorial videos because I'm stuttering and stuff, but oh well. Anyway, so yeah, first thing you're gonna do is grab your sanctuary. And this is gonna be your starting point for the rest of the zone. But we don't care about that, we're moving on, we're going back down here. And yeah, since I rested, these fuckers respawned. These skeletons are assholes. Like seriously, they will follow you throughout the entire area. If you wanna skip them, uh, I don't recommend it. Because yeah, they will follow you everywhere. And they can catch you at a very bad time. So you honestly wanna deal with them. But uh, right now, considering I know where I'm going, uh, I'm just gonna skip this other guy, fuck him. So, but yeah, you definitely don't skip them if you're going through the area for the first time. Like, you can see, some of these monsters are annoying as fuck. They will follow you everywhere. Right, so first thing we do is we go to the absolute bottom to where these uh, pyramid head knockoffs are. And we wanna get past them, that's it. We don't need to fight them, no nothing. They're super easy, just roll if you can. I, my character can't roll because I'm too fat, but... You can see that I just blocked, I got out of the way, easy peasy. Oh, oh, never mind. That was not meant to happen. Anyway, we wait for the platform to respond. I kind of jumped off the wall by mistake. But yeah, after you get past the pyramid knockoffs where the uh, half of that uh, ship is destroyed, Checkpoint. Right above us is the boss room, which cannot be accessed uh, through here. Uh, it can be accessed from the other side. And this checkpoint is actually terrible if uh, you plan to make it to the boss. If you want to make it to the boss, honestly, go through the sanctuary. Right. So in order to access um, this spot right here, which is where the farming starts, uh, you are going to need a sigil. Uh, hard light brand, yeah, this is the one. Basically, when you see weird stuff like that on the ground, grab a torch and we get across. And that's it, we're in the area where we're gonna be farming. So, uh, in this area, in this uh, sanctuary area, I do not have the leader. If you have the leader, you're gonna be making 10% more salts. So, yeah, that's something you wanna do. By the way, if from this point on, instead of salts, I say souls, don't be confused. 
because seriously this is Dark Souls in 2D let's not kid ourselves here anyway so obviously we want the grasping ring because it gives us 10% more salts uh, you want the Kismar stone probably it's not recommended uh, if you just wanna be fast but I like items and I'm greedy like that this is gonna increase the item drop rate but if you're just in it for the salts and the gold you don't need this it will probably slow you down picking up shit so equip something else that will make you faster or make you deal more damage something like that over here here's a weird choice ring of brilliance why would you do that you have a torch right I'll show you in a sec so as we keep going through this area uh, obviously uh, on your way out and back in and here you're gonna need the torch so uh, when you do a lot of repetitions you may forget uh, about the torch and fall and it's gonna be annoying so preferably you wanna have the torch out all the time torches cost like 50 gold so they pretty much cost nothing but yeah anyway so uh, moving on we have the enemies that we're gonna be farming which are called let me look it up I looked it up in the beast area earlier and I actually wrote it down because I'm old school like that it's called a cave keeper right so there's gonna be six of these puppies going forward and that's uh, that's how we're gonna make the first part of the journey so uh, first things first like if you notice when we get too close to them uh, our lights go out because of their uh, thing on their head whatever I don't know how it works who, uh, who gets that stuff doesn't uh, doesn't matter anyway so y even if you have the torch out it's gonna be worthless unless you kill them so obviously you're gonna be a little squeamish because oh I can't see anything what uh, I don't know what the enemy is doing I don't know what I'm doing I don't know where I'm going don't worry this area is pretty straightforward there's nowhere you can die it's fine the only there's only two spots like here this wooden bridge uh, where you can fall and die but honestly and this is the second one that's it those are the two areas so yeah that might be a little scary at first but don't worry as long as you keep walking even if you don't know where where the hole is you're not gonna fall because you're given enough time to walk uh, by normally so here as you can see there's a trap which would be nice uh, if you can remember it. If you can't, you get hit. Big deal. It doesn't do much damage. So, yeah. We keep going. We keep killing these a-holes. So, that's six of them. With the grasping ring, without the leader, uh, the, uh, the six guys are gonna net you 2,904 souls. So, with the stone leader, obviously, it's gonna be over 3k. At this point your run can end if you're uh, not feeling lucky, but if you are feeling lucky, this is where the ring comes in. So, I don't like to fight this guy without a shield. I feel like it's much too res uh, reckless and it's not worth it without the shield. But yeah, uh, you can equip the ring or you can equip uh, a weapon charm that gives uh, light as long as you have some light source. Without the light source, you're in pitch black darkness, there's nothing to see here. So yeah, you don't want to fight like that. This thing's called the uh, Crypt Keeper, I think. Uh, yeah, let me check. Crypt Keeper, yes. Okay, so this Crypt Keeper, if you can kill him, he is gonna net you a good, uh, with the ring only, 5,500 souls. Not, ca not counting gold or drops, those are just uh, extra little bonuses. Right now, I am honestly not strong enough to kill him fast, so even if I did decide to farm this area, I probably wouldn't bother killing him. So yeah, I'd start killing him around the time where I can consistently kill him like fast enough in at least under like 10 hits or something. Right now I need like 20-25 hits and that takes way too long. So I'm not bothering with him, you can bother with him if you want. Like I said, without the leader, he uh, just with the ring he's worth 5500. The leader increases uh, the drop rate by 10%. So 10% from the ring and from the leader he starts at 5k. So safe to say that the 20% bonus is 1000k so he's gonna give you 6k. Right. So if you have a stone leader here and the ring, 
uh, this run uh, with the Crypt Keeper is gonna net you 10,000 souls, not counting items, not counting uh, anything else like gold and such. So, uh, like I said, well, I'm not gonna do that guy because it takes too long for me. Let's see how fast it's gonna take us to just go through the area with these guys. Okay, we're already up to the third guy. Here's the fourth guy. On the fourth guy we jump to avoid the trap. That's the fifth guy and here's the sixth guy. And we are ready to head back. And since I'm bothering to actually collect the gold and the items, it's actually gonna take me like a few seconds more. You can keep your torch out uh, all the time like I'm doing right now. If you want to not bother stopping uh, in front of the hole or having to remember right so uh, to be fair obviously I found I found a few locations that reward a lot more salts but the thing is if you're farming your brain is at some point going to be like okay shut down mode I'm going on autopilot and that's when you're going to end up dead so for me, a good farming spot is not only one that rewards you uh, with an okay amount uh, for the effort you put in, but it's also very safe. And this area is probably the safest that I found. Like, look at these guys. You just walk up to them, hit, hit, hit. They do absolutely nothing. Nothing. They are very passive, and even if they do end up hitting you, they do almost no damage. Like, they're, they're super uh, easy to kill. Like, look at them, they're pushovers. And with the Grasping Ring, they're worth almost 500. With the Stone Leader, I haven't checked. Like I said, I haven't found the need uh, to grind. I feel like the game is uh, fairly easy. And uh, I haven't felt any difficulty spikes or anything, even on the bosses. But yeah, if I need, a, uh, need souls, I'm currently about level 50 or level 60, something like that. Like if I end up needing souls, this seems like a very good location. It's a good location now. Later when you can kill the Crypt Keeper consistently very fast, it's gonna keep on giving. It's gonna get even better. So yeah, this is the kind of spot that you can uh, access relatively early in the game, like... Uh, I've went through like uh, 5 or 6 bosses in a few areas, so you can get here very early on. And it's gonna keep being good later when you kill the Crypt guy, so even late game I assume this is gonna be a very nice place to farm. Plus I'm also curious what kind of stuff maybe he drops, so I'm gonna farm him a little bit more to see if he drops some cool stuff. So, uh, in uh, relative terms of how easy it is and uh, the rewards, I'd say that uh, for me right now this is probably the best spot to farm. And I hope that you like it as well, hope this helped you, and yeah, enjoy the awesome, awesome swag new outro we have, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, and stay salty! Haha, <laughs> I lied! More salt jokes. Did you see me fly from the air?